Well, well, well. You know what? I'm not even going to get too much into the intro right now. Uh, I am Watts UK, although right now I am driving back from Springfield, Virginia, down to Newport News where I live. So, you know what? Tonight you can call me Watts Car. So, I am on my way back from an absolutely disgraceful and putrid, embarrassing New York Mets loss at the hand of the Washington Nothing Nulls because they got nothing left on their team, but they still had enough to kick the Mets' ass tonight. Luis Garcia is apparently now Trey Turner, Francisco Lindor, Fernando Tatis, and Manny Machado all rolled into one right now, making lights out defensive plays, hitting home runs, getting clutch hits. Who needs Trey Turner when you have Luis Garcia, apparently? I mean, tonight he looked like Pat Burrell did did against the Mets in the 2000s, like Chipper Jones has looked, like Paul DeYoung looked for the Cardinals against the Mets. What, what, what a despicable game this was. Now, it's one loss. You know, I'm not going to blow one loss out of proportion. But you, know, but you know what? I came on this channel a while back, a couple of weeks ago, and explained my reasons why I was still believing the New York Mets were going to win the National League East. And one of the biggest reasons was I was convinced, I was convinced that Billy Epler, Sandy Alderson, and Steve Cohen would do what they had to do to reinforce this roster and take it from just a playoff team and a team that was going to compete for a division to a team that was a legitimate favorite to beat a great team like the Dodgers, the Astros, or the Yankees. I really thought they were going to do it. And even in the last couple of days leading up, when they made a trade for uh, Daniel Vogelbach, not a very exciting move, but I'm like, okay, it's one piece. All right, fine. You know, they, they did that. And uh, th there were the rumors about Juan Soto, that Juan Soto was going to be traded. I got to be honest. I never for a second thought that Washington would trade him within the division. The, the asking price, Hector Gomez from ESPN has reported, that the asking price, the Mets offered, I think, their top four prospects, or four of their five prospects. I think it was Francisco Alvarez, Brett Beatty, Ronnie Mauricio. There was one other, pro Alex Ramirez, a very, very quickly rising outfield prospect. And uh, David Peterson. And it still wasn't enough. And they took what was not a, a pretty good haul from San Diego, including Mackenzie Gore and some other top-ranked prospects, but the Mets would have had to have outbid San Diego significantly to get Juan Soto. So I never thought it was a realistic target. So, so that doesn't happen. This afternoon, he goes to San Diego. Now, I took a half a day off, and I was monitoring the trade deadline all day long. You know, I was uh, I left work about 12 12.45 this afternoon. The trade deadline was at 6 p.m., and I began driving from Newport News up to uh, Springfield, Virginia, where I park my car. Then I take the DC Metro. I take the subway up to Nationals Park to, to the Met game. And on the whole drive, you know, there are all these different things coming out. I mean, you know, Minnesota was getting these relief pitchers. Philadelphia wound up getting Noah Syndergaard, <laughs> which is just hysterical in my mind. I, I can't wait to see how he works out. You know, the Yankees training Joey Gallo to the Dodgers. So, you know, I think they would have taken like a, you know, maybe a, a Felipe's French dip sandwich for him. With the original French dip place. It was in LA, okay? You can still get like a cup of coffee there for 15 cents. Pretty cool. So, and all this time I'm like, the Mets have to be making a move. I was sure they were going to get a Wilson Contreras, a David Robertson. Oh, Robertson also went to the Phillies. I guess the Phillies have a knack for uh, getting the Mets sloppy seconds. That's the only thing I can, uh, only conclusion I can come to. And so I get, uh, I park my car about four o'clock. I take the train in. It's about five o'clock. I go over to the bullpen, which is an outdoor, uh, basically an outdoor drinking area right behind the center field fence where they got some live music. They got all kinds of drinks. And I'm, I, I made up with a couple of other Mets fans. There was uh, Michelle, there was Tim, uh, Ravi, met, met some really great people. And we're all monitoring our phones. Just what are the Mets going to do? And what do the Mets need to do? You know, it's like, well, the Mets are bringing Jacob DeGrom in. I mean, this is like bringing in the best starter at the trade deadline. The, Met, the Mets didn't even need a starter. Of course, it's great to get Jacob DeGrom back, that's, but that's not the point. The Mets already had a deep rotation. Max Scherzer, Carlos Carrasco, Chris Bassett, David Peterson. Trevor Williams has done when he's well when he's had to fit in. Tyler McGill, he did well when he had to fit in. 
you know, so the point is they had bigger holes to me in the lineup. I mean, last night, J.D. Davis was batting fifth behind Pete Alonso. That was Pete Alonso's protection. J.D. Davis, 877 runs never with this guy. Are you kidding me? So we get the news as we're uh, right before, I think it was right around the time that I was getting off the train and walking over to the bullpen when the, the news came down the Mets were going to trade for Darren Ruff from San Francisco. So I wasn't too upset about it. They traded Davis, uh, addition by subtraction. Thomas Sapucky, a failed starter in the minors who is never going to be anything more than a reliever. And uh, two very low-level prospects that very few people outside of, you know, the Joe DeMeos of the world and John Morosis have probably ever heard of in their lives. So I wasn't too upset about it. And it's like, well, okay, if you couldn't get J.D. Martinez, who, by the way, was not traded. If you couldn't get Wilson Contreras, who, by the way, was not traded. You know, it's not as if another team outbid the Mets to get these players. The Red Sox and Cubs did not trade these guys at all. So I think they overvalued them. Now they're the ones who have to live with that decision. So I figured, okay, well, if you have Vogelbach from batting left and you have Ruff batting right-handed because Ruff uh, doesn't have the best batting average, but he has an 866 OPS against lefties. It's like you're kind of creating one really good designated hitter. If that's what it has to be, that's what it's, it has to be. All right, fine. But I really, really wanted at least one more bullpen arm. And the guy that I've wanted all along, and I made the video about Jorge Lopez, didn't work out, he goes to Minnesota. Robertson would have been a very good fit, he goes to Philadelphia. But I really wanted Andrew Chafin. I wanted I wanted Andrew Chafin last year. I wanted him during the offseason when he was a free agent and the Cubs let him go. Detroit signed him because, for whatever reason, this administration is like allergic to giving a reliever more than a one-year contract. Oh, which reminds me, Edwin Diaz is a free agent. He better get four or five years. But they did not sign Chafin, and they needed that lefty. It is devastated that Jason Shreve and Joely Rodriguez have not done the job and it has hurt this team. Chafin was never traded. So with about five minutes left to go, we find out that the Mets did get Michael Givens from the Cubs. So Givens used to be a closer in Baltimore. Buck Walter knows him. It, you know what? Fine. It's a decent piece. You know, he has a 2.66 ERA this season. All right, maybe he can be part of the bridge. If that pushes Adam Adovino back a little bit, Drew Smith, when he comes back, down a little bit. Plus, you're adding Trevor May uh, in the next few days. If he's healthy, he will be uh, a good piece for this bullpen. I think he was injured all season. You know, you have a little bit of a deeper bullpen. But what happens if you're in the playoffs and you've got to get out medals? What if you've got to get out Juan Soto? What if you've got to get out Freddie Freeman, Christian Yelich, who are you going to bring in to do it? Because Shreve's gone, and it sure as hell ain't going to... Joel Rodriguez, I'm terrified of that. Uh, I, I, I do not have a good feeling about this at all. And David Peterson, well, we saw what happened when Buck Showalter tried bringing him in in a, uh, in a close game uh, when he uh, gave up that two-run homer to Claybert Torres uh, about a week ago now. So, you know, the Mets have James McCann, Trevor May... Of course, Jacob DeGrom did come back tonight. Look, look good. Five innings, uh, six strikeouts, gave up one run, three hits, no walks. Uh, of course, the Mets didn't really score a whole heck of a lot for him, but the bullpen completely blew it. Uh, Steve Nogasek, uh, Mr. Pornstash himself. Uh, nobody's going to be confusing him with Keith Hernandez, uh, despite despite his uh, very impressive mustache game. Uh, he, he gave up dingers to players that nobody ever heard of. I, I actually think one of the guys who hit a home run off him... Uh, this new guy who's nobody's ever heard of. I think he was actually helping me at the mobile kiosk order a cheesesteak during the third inning of the game tonight. So he got absolutely rocked tonight. It was just pathetic. So at this point, and, and here's the thing. Look who the Braves got. Robbie Grossman from the Tigers, who's a, who's a very good player. He'll be a free agent, free agent after the season. They traded Will Smith, one of their worst relievers this season. Believe my dad would have, who's a big Braves fan, he would have just released Will Smith for nothing. Instead, they get a good, reliable starting pitcher and Jake Odorizzi back. And then if that's not enough, I didn't even find out about this till about eight o'clock last night because by at this point I was in the stadium. They got they got Ricio Iglesias from the Angels, an excellent closer, one of the best in the game, who's under contract through 2025. The stupid Anaheim Angels traded 
uh, were able to get Jesse Chavez and uh, one of the Braves' better pitching prospects, and they gave them Iglesias. Now in the back of the bullpen, the Braves have Iglesias and Kenley Jansen. Never mind the Tyler Madzex and the A.J. Minters and all these other guys. Uh, it, they're lights out. Uh, they got they got the... They're going to recreate the nasty boys of the 90s that uh, that the uh, Cincinnati Reds had when they won the World Series uh, over the A's in 1990. This bullpen is lights out at this point. Plus, their offense never slumps. It is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the Mets are like an all-or-nothing offense. They needed another bat to protect Pete Alonso. And with this combination of a DH, I, I understand the philosophy it's a little bit Atlanta-esque, like last year when Atlanta got Eddie Rosario, Jock Peterson, you know, Jorge Soler, guys like that to fortify their outfield. Uh, but you know what? Vogelbach and Ruff, I mean, they're the best place to have them in the lineup is about the seventh spot. It, you know, if a lefty's pitching, honestly, I think I trust Eduardo Escobar at this point. <laughs> I don't trust him against a righty. but So I am one... Very disappointed Mets fan. Between the upgrades the Braves made, the Padres made, I mean, Juan Soto, Josh Bell, uh, Brandon Drury. Brandon Drury. I would have been thrilled with Brandon Drury coming back to the Mets for the rest of the season. You know, they did that. The Dodgers are what they are. At best, the Mets are the fourth best team in this division. And I'll tell you what, this five-game series coming up against Atlanta, if they don't win three of those games, they are in serious, serious trouble. Because if, if, I really think if they don't win that series, they are going to lose this division race. In spite of the schedule, the Braves fortified themselves, and they did a better job at doing it than the Mets did. Now, I'll give Gibbons a chance. I'll give Ruff a chance. But you know what? They needed another piece somewhere, either another bat or another bullpen arm. They didn't do it. They valued their prospects. Um, they better be right about them. They better be freaking right about them. Just doesn't it just doesn't make sense for a team that is a win now team for a team that this coming year they have free agents including Jeff McNeil, Seth Lugo, Edwin Diaz, Brandon Nemo, Chris Bassett, Carlos Carrasco, Taiwan Walker, Jacob Degrom is going to opt out. At least a quarter of this roster is going to get turned over. This group is never going to be together again. Never. They had to go for it. And they didn't. So, this is what it comes to. Win that series against Atlanta. You have to hold them off. Because I'm telling you, if they lose that, the way the playoff structure goes, they're going, they would be the second seed in the NL if they won the division. Now, with the way that the playoffs work, okay, they would get, they would face the winner of the three seed, which would be the NL Central winner, against the six seed. So most likely you would have something like Milwaukee or maybe St. Louis, one of those teams, I guess like Philadelphia or whoever loses that NL Central race. Whereas on the other hand, the four and five seeds, you have the top two wild cards. Right now that would be Atlanta and San Diego. So if it comes to that, the Mets could very likely be going to San Diego, even though they're six games up. San Diego is going to be feasting on the Colorados and the Arizonas of the world for a while. Okay, the the Mets are the Mets are the Mets are going to be feasting on ever on, on anything anytime soon. So yeah, I, I can't imagine the Padres not going on a huge run. I, I don't think they're not going to upstage the Dodgers and take away the division. But to me, it, this looks like to me if I had to guess on what's going to happen, the Mets are going to have to go to San Diego and win uh, win a three great game series, and then from there they would have to go uh, face uh, face the Dodgers. I can't imagine. San Diego and Los Angeles. And and that's not even getting to Atlanta yet. That is a tall, tall order. And I'll tell you what. My optimism as a Mets fan in the last 24 hours has been greatly diminished. So we'll see what happens. I'd love to be wrong. I'll be, uh, of course, I'll be following everything. This five-game series is going to tell us a hell of a lot. It's going to tell us a hell of a lot about this team. And uh, they got to show us something. They really have to show us something in this game. Well, I've got about another uh, two hours to go on my way uh, back to Newport News. So I will be back. And, I, of course, I will be back in you-know-where, the wicker chair. Take care.